I'm Charlotte McLeod with the Investing News Network, and here today with me is Rick Rule, President and CEO of Sprott U.S. Holdings. Thank you for joining me today. Pleasure, Charlotte. Thank you for having me. So today we're here at the Sprott Natural Resource Symposium. In your talk earlier today, you went over a few reasons why this bull market is a little different than other previous bull markets. One of the reasons is that there are some interesting things going on with the GDXJ. For those not in the know, could you explain what's going on there? Yeah, fascinating subject. The GDXJ, as your listeners will know, is the Van Eck Junior Gold Miners Index. Mm -hmm. And what's particularly interesting about it is that for the first time that I know of in market history, an ETF, which is supposed to reflect the direction of the sector, has become so dominant that it determines the direction of the sector. Uh, as I said this morning, the tail is wagging the dog. Now, there are several interesting manifestations of this. The first is that while investors used to look to individual stocks in the sector to capture volatility or direction, they're looking to the ETF rather than to the individual stocks and robbing volumes from the stocks. The second thing is that the size of the ETF is so large relative to the size of the sector that the 60 or 70 companies included in the sector have more volume and higher share prices as a consequence of their inclusion in the sector. The third thing is, because of the need for size and liquidity, the index is no longer really a junior so stock index, where the median company has a $4.8 billion market cap in a sector where many companies have market caps less than $100 billion. The upshot of all of this is that while momentum investors will be looking to companies that are included in the ETF, true speculators, true investors, will be looking for companies outside the ETF that have a higher cost of capital and a lower share price and try and figure out which of those are strategic acquisitions for companies included in the sector and buy those companies in anticipation of merger and acquisition activities. Okay, so I don't know if this is a secret, but how, how can investors identify those companies? What should they be looking for? Investors who seek to do this on their own need first to look at the ETF, and they need to find the companies that are the largest holdings of the ETF. That's very easy to do. You can go on the Van Eck website. Look at the individual companies that are large holdings of the ETF and figure out what you can about their operations. Try and figure out, as an example, if they are a gold producer in Ghana and Mali, try and figure out other companies that are successfully producing gold in Ghana or Mali or have advanced exploration stage properties that would be a likely strategic fit for the companies that were included. Buy the stock and hope for a takeover. Okay, makes sense to me. We spoke last, I think quite recently, about two months ago. I'm not sure your thoughts on gold have changed much since then, but could you talk a little about what you see coming in the next half of the year? Uh, a half year from my own point of view is a fairly short time frame. The market would seem now, as it was the last time that we talked, a very complacent part place, and gold normally moves in accordance with fear. So my suspicion is that any upside that we have in gold will be fairly muted. That's of course uh, conditioned on the fact that for the third time in my career, as we, as we discussed mm -hmm. in our last interview, gold has moved genu generally up in conjunction with the US dollar being strong. That happened before in my career in 1975 and in 2001. And in both of those prior circumstances, the dollar rolled over and gold did extremely well. Is past prologue? I don't know. Very recently, we've seen a bit of dollar weakness and gold strength. Does that mean that the circumstance that we enjoyed in 1975 and 2001 will occur again? I don't know. But it's a very interesting coincidence. Okay. What are you thinking about Fed rate hikes for the rest of the year? I know people are wondering about that. It would seem that the economy can accommodate Fed rate hikes. Mm -hmm. So my hope is that they do hike the rate. I think the idea that you have artificially low interest rates, which is a different way of saying that you penalize savers and productive people for the benefit of spenders, is stupid economic policy. And 
My hope is that they continue to raise interest rates to have less interest rate distortion in the economy. Uh, sadly, of course, Washington and Ottawa don't care too much about what I think. Okay, so lots about gold, but I think over, at least at our site, we're finding our readers are very interested in lithium and cobalt. There's lots going on in that space, and I think there's also a lot of misinformation. Do you have any ideas for investors on how, how they can educate themselves? Well, educating yourself about battery metals really probably begins with reading the annual reports of existing battery metal producers. Mm. It's one thing to listen to the opinion of editors that have an opinion on 50 different topics. Mm -hmm. It's much more informative to go to actual industry experts. So as an example, uh, in the cobalt industry, you'd have to read the Glencore mm -hmm. annual report, uh, maybe the Valet annual report. In the lithium business, certainly the SQM annual report would be useful. It's interesting reading that. Lithium is all the rage now, of course. And the four large lithium producers in the world believe that lithium as a resource is in oversupply. They believe that the rapid demand increases in lithium has overwhelmed the processing capabilities of the producers. There's not a supply problem with the commodity itself, but rather a processing problem, which the industry will address at these lithium prices in due time. Now, it's interesting that the companies that are exploring for lithium, i.e. the companies that don't have any lithium, believe there's a shortage. And the companies that are producing lithium don't believe there is a shortage. You need to decide which side is right. The people mm -hmm. who have been in the lithium business for 30 years or the people who have come into the lithium business now who couldn't spell lithium five years ago. From my answer, you'll see where I think the yeah. truth lies. Moving on to cobalt, mm -hmm. however, that's a very different situation. The cobalt story is unique in my life in that demand for cobalt is constrained only by supply. The utility of cobalt in many applications, including batteries, is so great that if the supply were to increase, the price could increase too. People are constraining fabrication demand for cobalt, not because of the cobalt price, but because they're afraid that they won't have access to material five years from now. The second part of the cobalt equation, which will be painful for your listeners, is that you find cobalt in economic concentrations in two places in the world. Russia, which people hate, and Congo, which people despise. Canadian speculators want to find cobalt in Canada, which is interesting because other than the, co than the component of a name of a town in Ontario, Canada doesn't have much cobalt. So you can look for cobalt in a place that isn't, where it isn't, that you're comfortable in, or you can look for cobalt in a place where it is that you're uncomfortable in. I've chosen door two. We are investing in Congolese cobalt. We're investing in Russian cobalt. We are investing in early stage exploration for cobalt in lateritic terrains, both in Australia and Brazil. But exploration is inherently risky. If you actually care about cobalt rather than finding cobalt, you have to make yourself comfortable with Congo and you have to make yourself comfortable with Russia, which most people are unwilling to do. Most people would prefer to lie to themselves about where they're going to find it and pretend to search for it where it isn't. Okay, so those are, those are some food for thought, I think, for people. My last question, so lithium cobalt, very hot right now, but what, what's going to be the next lithium or cobalt? What's the next commodity that's coming up? I think the next commodity that's coming up is probably cobalt. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, certainly when you look across the range of commodities, uh, what's worked for the last 40 years is to find a commodity for which ongoing demand is assured, where the selling price of the commodity is less than the cost to produce it. That means either the commodity becomes unavailable to society or the price goes up. Certainly copper fits in that well, as does nickel. Will these commodities work in the next two years? I have no idea. Will they work over five years? Either they do or there won't be any electricity, which suggests that they will. Okay, well, that is all for me. Thank you once again for joining me today. I'm Charlotte McLeod, and this was Rick Rule.